you know. Uh, let me see if I can pass in Kurt really quick, and I can say we'll give you the rundown of what's going on between uh, Canelo Alvarez and the zone and Golden Boy. It is a 24-page lawsuit, and, uh, you know, it all consists about the 11, um, 11 fights that the zone had signed Canelo to for the $365 million deal, which was a pretty massive deal for a fighter and any athlete, right? You know, so... I just repeat what uh, uh, you know uh, Amilcar is saying. Um, yeah, but uh, let me see if I got Kurt with us here. I think we do. Kurt, are you on the line with us, bro? I am. I am. How you doing, can bro? You first off, thanks. For, yeah, I can hear you great. Uh, first off, <laughs> man, thanks for uh, for tuning in, bro. I really, I mean, uh, coming on the show so we can uh, discuss these bre- this breaking news between Canelo Alvarez, the zone. And Golden Boy. Well, no, I always love coming on, man. I always love your show. Uh, pleasure to be on. I appreciate so, it. I appreciate so yeah, what do you want to talk about, man? What do you, what do you want to so, know? <laughs> okay. So this is – this is. Uh, let me just finish off what I was saying. You know, the, the minimum was $35 million guaranteed to Canelo, you know, from the $40 million from the zone given to Golden Boy. Um, obviously, that hasn't happened. Obviously, the pandemic happened. You know, this was a lot of a lot of the, the money was being relied on the gate. That's closed down. There are no gate fights. It's not going to happen. Um, and as of right now, Canelo suing two hundred and two eighty million for damages. That including uh, attorney, uh, uh, yeah, attorney fees and et cetera, a uh, few minute damages. So, I guess my question, Kurt, is how real is this? Is this could this be a possible shake you up? Because obviously there was fights presented from Canelo team to, you know, from Golden Boy to the Zone, and they said no because the misconception that the Zone got from Golden Boy was that there was a guarantee that Gennady Golovkin was on the table, and it doesn't seem like that's been panning out. So they refused every other fight from B.J. Saunders to Callum Smith. You know that now they're saying that it's not premium. Those are not premium fights. The premium fight would be fighting two UFC superstars or fighting his own promoter, Oscar De La Hoya. So, again, my question is, how real is this? Is this Canelo's way of saying, you know, if you guys don't follow through with this, um, you know, I'm going to sue you guys. You guys got to come through and, 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 and deciding uh, or not just following suit of who I want to fight next. Well, obviously, it's it, it's very real. They've they've filed a complaint in federal court, so it, you know it, it, it's on. I mean, I mean, I think I think it's it's useful to kind of have like a a background on what's going on at the zone. Um, you know, the zone just laid off a ton of their uh, their U.S. staff. Um, you know, when when the pandemic hit, they stopped paying rights fees with various sports leagues around the globe. You know, until they resume their season. They canceled Major League Baseball change-up, the MLB change-up, the baseball program they had, and they hyped. And that was, you know, uh, only after one year of, like, a three-year deal. They don't have any any fights scheduled in the U.S. for the rest of the year right now. Uh, though there's rumors that, that Devin Haney and, and, and Danny Jacobs, Triple G, you know, those, those fights might get announced, and, and you got a rematch maybe with uh, – Juan Francisco Estrada and Chocolatito that might be in Mexico. Right. So those those might those might, might be coming up. But clearly the zone is pulling away from the US operation. They're focusing on their global reach. You know, rumors are you know, you hear rumors that they're looking to raise money or, or that they're looking to sell the whole thing. So, you know, against that that backdrop we've got this mess with Canelo, you know, and then in all honesty it's really hard to comment on the soup without Seeing either contract, you know, but he, he, right. one between the zone and Golden Boy, or the one between Golden Boy and Canelo, because it's any breach of contract suit, it really comes down to the language in the contract. But, but from what we know in the press, you know, like you said, I mean, after the Rocky Fielding fight, the zone was was supposed to pay Canelo thirty five million a year for his next ten, you know, or thirty five million a fight for his next ten fights, two per year from two thousand nineteen through two thousand twenty three. What we don't know are, are, are the conditions that they put on those fights. You know, if there's any wiggle room on those guarantees. Because Canelo's alleging that his contract with Golden Boy didn't put any specification of opponents, 
you know, only that they had to mutually agree upon them. You know, um, you know, the main contention, of, you know, at least according to the to the article by Coppinger, Coppinger's done a really good job. Mike Coppinger's done a really good job of covering this. He's saying that that the language in the in the DAZN, uh, you know, Golden Boy deal is that you know Canelo needs to fight premier opponents, like you're saying, and uh, and DAZN, you know, apparently was disputing that Danny Jacobs or or Kovalev were were premier enough because they, you know, I, they, Kurt, they, let me let me interrupt ahead. you there. Let me. Let me point this out. My 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 interpretation of premier opponents is is not the fighter itself, but premier mean the draw of crowds. Like they're looking for subscribers, right? I mean that's their whole that's their lifeline. That's the that's what pumps their blood and keeps them going to survive in this pandemic or to survive solely, you know, to continue on as a company, right? I mean. That's right. what I was interpreting that that they were looking at Premier because when I saw the two UFC fighters and even Oscar, his promoter, a forty-seven-year-old guy, they were saying this, this is the list that we're looking at. That hit me there like they they don't really don't give a shit about the fight fans. They're caring about their wallet and trying to get their return. Am I? I'm, could I be way off on that? No, no, no. I, I think that's right. But I mean, in all honesty, like when you look at the weight division Canelo fights in, you know, I mean, you know, and 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 has fought in, you know, like, you know, what name some more premier guys than I mean, you know, obviously Triple G is the bone of contention. I mean, they 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 spend a lot of money on both Canelo and Triple G, hoping to get that third fight, you know, to drive subscribers. And thus far, for whatever reason, it hasn't happened. Um. You know, and and you know, there's there's been a lot of speculation about what Golden Boy promised uh, the zone, but I mean, if you know, again, we don't have the language of the contract, so we don't know um, what right. was promised between the zone and Golden Boy. I mean, Coppinger's reporting it was just there there was no specification of of certain opponents, just that they had to be premier. So you know, I mean, that, that's going to be a that's going to be a dog fight in litigation. You know, I mean, wait, what does premier mean? And and and, and you know, we're we're Danny Jacobs and Sergey Kovalev premier enough, you know. I mean, I thought the complaint did a good job of pointing out that, you know, listen, Canelo's wins over those two guys were good enough to make him fighter of the year pretty much unanimously across the board by every boxing publication. So, so right. he wasn't facing chop liver, you know. I mean, he was facing solid fighters. But, uh, but yeah, man, it, no. it's a mess. To me, it just looks like the zone's you know, trying to kind of cut and run and cut expenses and, and, you know, just kind of, you know, reduce their obligations in the U S. Um, and, you know, it's Canelo's trying to hold them to the contract, you know, it's put golden boy in a really tough position for sure. You know, cause the zone oh, yeah. is a fun to deal. <laughs> yeah. Most, most, most definitely. Look real quick. Uh, one of our listeners in the chat room asked, he wants to ask you, is it wise for Canelo to sue te- uh, two separate entities so as to restrict, uh, uh, extradite himself from two separate contracts. Seems like a lot for a judge to figure out. Is that wise for him to go after two entities? Well, I think, in all honesty, I think Canelo really, I mean, he wants the DAZN money, but, you know, from all sources that, you know, Canelo and Golden Boy have been feuding for a little while. So, um, you know, one of the things I thought was interesting in the complaint is there's an ongoing audit by Canelo of Golden Boy's, you know, revenues and expenses and all their books from his fight. You know, they're trying to determine whether he got, um, you know, underpaid or overcharged for things. So obviously there's, there's just a lot of contention going on. And you see one of the causes of action uh, that's in there is a declaratory judgment, you know, to see, um, you know, see if the judge, you know, d- d- determines the legal rights and duties of the parties and whether Canelo can, can go ahead and get out of those contracts or operate outside of the contracts, you know, fight for somebody else. So, right. um, you know, it, it's really tough. Cause I mean, I don't know who's going to pay Canelo $35 million a fight, you know, um, during COVID, you know, and the, there's just a lot of, you know, there's so much uncertainty yeah. in the boxing pay-per-view market right now. Um, I think, you know, in a way he just really wants to enforce the contract. I mean, he'd like to get paid. Um, but if these guys are going to refuse to pay and try and get out, then Canelo just like, listen, I'll, you know, this is my chance to get out on my own and, and do my own thing, you know? I mean, can I, I got, ask a I question? Gotta, yeah, I was going to say, Mokar, go ahead. 
Yeah, I mean, would LeBron James or, you know, uh, anybody, name another NBA player, Harden, not sue the NBA if the NBA just tried to not pay them because of COVID? I think I think Canelo's argument is that he's an elite athlete. The press release said this is the biggest contract in sports history. Give me right. my money, bitch. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I realize that people are hurting right now in COVID. You know, I'm hurting to a certain extent. I know people in my family are, but Canelo doesn't see himself as a commoner. He doesn't compare himself to a public school teacher like me or, you know, a guy like David. He's comparing himself to the Hardens and the other elite athletes. And guess what? Those guys are getting paid. Right. Yeah, listen, a contract's a contract. You know, these guys, you know, they, they made the contract with them. You know, it's, it's, you know, I mean, we haven't, you know, again, we haven't seen them, don't know all the terms of it. Um, the real question is, you know, is there any wiggle room for the zone to really, you know, get out from under this obligation? They're trying to make some, but it, it just seems like, you know, um, their subscriptions have, you know, basically got decimated by, by COVID. You know, they're bleeding cash and they're just, they're, they're trying not to pay canelo what they owe him you know according to the contract they're trying to like use other means and you know they they try to negotiate something something else with them uh, you know according to the complaint the allegations in the complaint you know some stock in the company some deferred payment um but you know they they weren't able to work something out so yeah they're basically just not paying him what they they promised to pay him so he's suing somebody on twitter um you know, they were putting me on a, uh, they were tagging me. I don't know what you call that. You know what I mean? They put you in part of the conversation. And they were saying, since Canelo did this, and obviously now Gennady Golovkin's not going to get that fight because it's going to draw out. I mean, you know, I mean, Canelo's possibly going to leave the zone. Does that line up for Triple G to file suit against the zone as well? Because the promise to him was that he was going to get the third fight with Canelo Alvarez. Does he have a strong case there, Kurt? I mean, again, you know, I'd have I'd have to see the contract that that Triple G Promotions and and Gennady worked out with his own. I mean, I, I don't know if they're again if they had promises of a specific fight with Canelo, or uh, or just you know premier opponents. Um, I you know I, I I mean I think they are working out a date for Triple G um, to fight on the zone. I mean that, that's the rumors I'm hearing. Uh, probably sometime right. maybe October. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but you know, yeah, I mean, listen, if, if they're also balking at paying him or meeting their obligations, yeah, well, of course, absolutely. You, you know, he's got grounds to sue if they're breaching the contract, for sure, you know. Um, but, again, we'd have to see the contract and if there's any promises of a specific fight with Canelo. I mean, um, from from Coppinger's, you know, uh, reporting, you know, you know what, what he knows, he's saying that, you know, there wasn't any – specific mention of Triple G in the DAZN Golden Boy contract, but again, we don't know. Yeah, it seems to me they're going off a lot of hearsay, saying that, like, Golden Boy um, inserted the name Gennady Golovkin to DAZN, but I mean, I mean, you deal with a lot of contracts. I mean, you know, you're a lawyer. I mean, is, is that's not common, is it, to put somebody's name in the contract as a, as a future promise i've never seen that done i mean i've never dealt with that no 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 it definitely it, it you know i mean depending on the length of the contract this is a really lengthy contract um but i've done contracts with fighters where you know you you um there is a specific you know if your fighter wins this fight you know then you know he will have to fight you know x or x I, i've done those deals um it's it's you know, I mean, everything's negotiable. It's boxing, you know? <laughs> so uh, it's possible that they do have specific fights in there. I mean, obviously, um, the danger of that is if someone gets injured or what have you, I mean, you'd have to provide for those contingencies or, or you'd also have to get the other party to agree to the fight. So it's that's why it's very possible that uh, Golovkin is not in there and Canelo is not named in the Golovkin deal um, because, you know, you you pretty much – if you're going to like make that deal, you have to get the signatures of everybody involved and, and, and have them obligated to, to fulfill that contract. Otherwise, you know, you're, 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 <laughs> I mean, you're, you're kind of making a, you know, a, a, an agreement to, to agree, you know, I mean, you, you know, some right. that you're going to, you know, it's not really binding. So, 
So, yeah, I mean, it, yes, it's possible that specific names go in there, but you have to pretty much have all the parties agree to that if you're going to do it. So, you got to get Wow. Off. What a mess. <laughs> what, a, what a mess. Well, you, you know, know? What? To, to me, it's just such, it's, you know, I mean, uh, a few years ago, you know, I mean, in 2018 when DAZN came in, I mean, what got me excited was that you had, you know, and you had PBC getting their deal, uh, Top Rank getting their deal. You had more money in boxing than probably in the history of the sport. And there was just so much potential, you know, to, to really raise the sport to another level. You know, like if, right. if you know, if, if fighters and managers and promoters had cooperated and, and had like the best fighting the best you know, on, on a consistent basis, you know, I've made this argument a million times. Like, you know, they'd all gotten together and kind of followed the lead of the World yeah. Boxing Super Series and just did that for every division and put all those, you know, spread those fights out on all these different networks. You know, we really would have had a, <laughs> I mean, it, boxing would be a major sport again. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. But since you just had all these separate deals and nobody really cooperating that much, you had a few big fights that got made. Not all of them got made. You know, now COVID hits and, you know, the zone looks like, you know, they're, they're pulling out, you know. It, it really looks like they're pulling out. They, they're they going to, like, fulfill whatever obligations they can. They're going to try and get out of the Canel one. It's just not looking good, you know. It's not looking good. And, and uh, yeah, the they, they realize. And I'm, like, I'm like in the dumps, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like they realize that, you know, the honeymoon's over, and they're like, you know what? This is not what I thought it was going to be. I, I, I want out. I, I need to get out, you know. Um, well, COVID I, Amilka, just def- decimated the subscriber base, and without the subscriber base, you know, they, they couldn't really, um, you know, make a bid on, on the other major sports. So, yeah, the the whole U.S. operations of the zone, I think, have, have, have really hit a wall. Um and uh, it looks like they're just going to cut and run a little bit. You know, I mean, I hope not. I hope that they're, they, they just, you know, are, are trying to, you know, do what they can to save money. And then, you know, once, you know, things return to normal, they, they get back and have an interest in boxing here in the U.S. and, and spend the money. But it's not looking good, man. You know, it's not looking good. Here's a good, here's a good question from you, uh, for you from Troy Williams. So what does this lawsuit mean to me as a subscriber? Does it mean I'll be watching darts and crickets on the zone until my year is up? I'll tell you what it meant to me. i tell you what it went to me as a subscriber. I canceled, and I immediately, right. I immediately put in a chargeback dispute with Amex. So that's why I, that's why I, 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 that that's I suggest yeah. every that's what I suggest everybody else to do. You know, take that mm-hmm. screenshot. Take that screenshot. You know, of 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 a day when they're not showing anything because there's a lot of black blacked out days on their schedule, you know, submit that Canelo article and, and get you. And get your money back. Yeah. Get your money back for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I totally understand that sentiment. You know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, turn this call into like, you know, throwing eggs all at the zone, <laughs> but the bottom line is, listen, you know, you only have so much money, you know, to spend on boxing, right? I mean, that's that's always been an issue when when you've got pay per views and you you're you're doing the subscription thing with the zone, and if the zone, you know, is is I mean, right now you look on the boxing schedule and they've got like one fight in Britain, you know, scheduled the the Lewis Ritson fight in October, and I don't see anything for the rest of the year. And again, I, you know, I, I'm not saying that there's not going to be fights. I've heard that they're that they're going to have like you know maybe three or four fights uh, that are, you know, in North America or involve fighters like Triple G who, who, you know, are based in North America now. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's not like it was last year, you know, when they had a, a tremendous schedule or the year before that, like at the end of the year where they really had great fights in, in the fall and winter. So, you know, you, you do well, have I mean, to like, a... ask yourself, well, what am I paying for? You know, and if they don't have Canelo, right. you know, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think Anthony Joshua is going to fight. I mean, there, there are some fights, you know, of, of interest to me that are that are going to be on for the rest of the year. So I'll probably stick around. But, um, but yeah, listen, I don't blame Milkar, and I don't blame people who are who are very disappointed in what's going on. 
I apologize, Hap. I'm like I said, I don't know what happened with the Skype. It just, uh, I mean, I'm on it, but it's not working. So I had to put the audio through my phone. But I will upload the audio after back on YouTube so you can hear everything clear. But unfortunately, right now is what all I could do because um, I can't log off and then redo it again. Um, going back to my thought with, with going back to what you were saying, uh, Kurt, uh, about the zone having a great schedule in 2018-19, I mean, they, obviously they had a plan. You know, when the pandemic hit, I had said this yesterday, I mean, on, Mon- on the Monday show, I was just like, it was almost like because of the pandemic, nobody decided to get creative. Like the way Top Rank did and PVC and Showtime, they seemed to, to work out these this situation. They understood where they were at, and then they, they, they got a team together, and they moved forward. Where the zone didn't do any of that. I mean, I guess, I guess my, my thought of them is that they behaved like a broadcaster, unlike the way like HBO and Showtime uh, started behaving later on in the, when they got involved with boxing, which is more like a promoter. To me, I kind of felt like maybe the zone should have stepped up and started acting more like a promoter and not depend on Eddie Hearn and Golden Boy to do this. Because to me, they it, obviously they dropped the ball with the zone and, and having a backup plan or not even presenting. Or maybe they did. I don't know what they what they did show the zone where they weren't even happy with it and they didn't want to you know uh, uh, televise it. I mean, put it on their their network. I mean, it, there's so much. Involved in this, that it's, I mean, everything's got to be going, hmm, I don't know, man. You know, I wish I was that fly on the wall to hear, you know what I mean, the conversations of, of what was going on. Yeah, listen, I mean, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I, you know, the promoters, you know, like Eddie Hearn, I thought he, I thought he delivered, you know, I thought that those fights at, you know, at, at, in his backyard, literally in his backyard, I thought they were great. You know, I mean, he, he they really put some great matchups on there. A couple fight of the year candidates, um, you know, big upset with Dillian White. Um, you know, I, I thought Eddie Hearn kind of did his part, and and he did a great fight here in the U.S. too, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, with uh, Cecilia Brekus and getting upset by Jessica McCaskill. So, um, you know, I think Ed, Eddie's trying to hold up his end of the bargain. It just seems like you know, the zone just got hit so hard by COVID and, and the, the subscription losing subscribers that they really just seem to be cutting and running, <laughs> you know, or I don't know what the plan is, but like they've let go of a lot of employees here in the U S and if right. they're like balking at paying Canelo, that's not a good game plan to, to continue doing their, uh, their, I mean, he's like the linchpin of their boxing plan here in, in the zone USA. So um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, you know, it's it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Looks like they're they're God, pulling I mean, out instead of digging in. And your best and, and your ex, you know expertise. Can you give me what? What do you think the draw out of this lawsuit is going to happen? I mean, listen. You know what? I, I mean, I, in an ideal world, the zone would be like, all right, you know. It, it's come to a lawsuit, you know, we don't want this to drag on, um, you know, we're going to live up to our contract. We're going to put the fights on, um, you know, or, and, and maybe they come up with like a date certain for, for Golovkin next year. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's a reasonable outcome, but I, I really don't know the zone's desire to like just save money and not spend anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe they let Canelo go. I don't know. I, I really don't know where their head's at. Um, I would I would like to think that they're going to resolve this and they're going to find a way to, to make Canelo happy and, and keep him on the deal. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, I, I don't think it's going to go to trial and all that. I think they will settle it out. Um, it's just it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, are, are they going to live up to their obligations or are they – are they going to let Canelo go, or, or are they going to reach some sort of settlement in between? Um, you know, it's 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 kind of hard to say. I mean, I'd really like to see them settle it out and just, you know, resume the contract, but uh, I don't know what their willingness is. I mean, it's certainly not a good look for them, this lawsuit, at all. <laughs> so, no. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a big PR hit to them, and, 
you know, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. You know, I mean, it, it, it really depends on what their plans are. If they if they're just cutting and running from the from the U.S., then uh, then maybe they they just uh, they just release them. You know, um, but if they they plan to stay in, they they've got to meet their obligations, man. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I hope it works out quickly, but but we'll see. Normally, how long? I mean, normally when you see a case like this, I mean, well, Mikey Garcia, it drew out what two years. I mean, could could we end up seeing this again? A two year uh, wait to see Canelo get back into the ring? Do you think? Well, I mean, again, you know, there's in the complaint, there's a declaratory judgment. Um, you know, the, the you know they're asking for a declaratory judgment, but generally in breach of contract cases, if you're not just bringing a straight declaratory judgment and the judge sees that it's a that it's a, a, a really a contract dispute, then they're not going to like go to the declaratory relief right away. I mean, they're just going to resolve, you know, um, you know the the breach allegations. So it could go it could go a long time. You know, it, you know, I mean, it's, obviously they're going to be fighting over you know the definition of premier <laughs> if if copyright right. articles are, you know, are are on point. Um, so you know that that's something that would go to a jury. You know, I doubt very seriously they could resolve it by uh, summary judgment or a motion to dismiss. So, um, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I mean, one thing that you know, Canelo. I mean, there's, there's a lot of wrinkles to this. Like, um, you know, I, I know mo- most promoters at this point in time, probably Golden Boy and and, and Top Rank. I mean, they, they all have like choice of law and and choice of venue. Um, clauses in, in their contracts and most, you know, I think I mean, I don't know, I, I, I don't again, I haven't seen the contract, but I would think that they both, right. it's, it's Nevada law, so this this suit was filed in California, it may get removed, uh, I don't know if there's an arbitration clause in there that it may, you know, get sent to arbitration uh, but one, one move Canelo's lawyers could make is, is, is to try and, like, you know while this suit is, is pending, you know, to, to allow, you know, have some sort of agreement between the parties to allow Canelo to fight and fight on another, you know, network or fight on pay-per-view. Um, but, you know, what that agreement looks like, you know, I'm not sure because the zone is like anti-pay-per-view <laughs> and <laughs> allowing him to fight means he could also get beat, right? And, you know, the, you know even if they want to resume the contract, that, that might put it in danger. So, they may fight that, so so it's gonna be it's gonna be a tussle. If they don't settle it right away, yeah, it, it could definitely get ugly. But uh, I, oh, would hope I hope Canelo's back in I, the ring before the end of the year. Yeah, <clears throat> I hope they they can settle their differences behind closed doors, and and we can get them back in the ring and see these real premier fights that boxing fans want to see Canelo fight. Um, again, in the chat room, Nato asked, with this lawsuit going on, I mean, does that prevent Canelo? surfing to another promoter and getting a fight? I mean, or or he's locked until this is cleared. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's he's under contract to, to Golden Boy, and, 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 and he's agreed that it, all of, you know, his, his fights will be on the zone. So in order for him to fight on another network, there's got to be something worked out with the zone. Um, so, yeah, until, until that would something... Be, that would, that would be a um, a breach of He'd his be contract. That, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, or yeah. Golden Boy would be breaching the agreement. So, and Golden Boy, yeah, might have to like you know try to enjoin Canelo from fighting if uh, if he's trying to do that without them involved or, or off of his own. But, but yeah, I mean, like I said, Golden Boy in a really tough spot. You know, I mean, they they're on the hook for for this you know thirty five million because his own promised to fund it, and and now they're not funding it. So. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the parties would have to work something out for Canelo to, to actually, uh, fight on another network. You know, I think he's obligated, uh, under the agreement to, to, to fight on, uh, the zone. Well, there you go, man. Kurt, again, I, thanks. Thank you a lot for coming on, leaving the ring and, uh, answering these questions, bro. I look forward to speaking to you again, bro. Always a pleasure, David. Always a pleasure, man. Be well. You too. Take care. Well, that was interesting. 
yeah. I mean, I wanted Kurt because he, he is a boxing lawyer and he's worked with contracts and he's, um, you know, I know I forgot to tell Kurt, uh, 